Hello and welcome to another Archan XP webinar. This is the penultimate episode of our advanced course. And today we are going to look at uh, curtain walls, how to create large glass surfaces with multiple mullions and multiple glass panels. My name is Zoltan Tod. I'm uh, working for uh, Cadline as a partner manager, but in my spare time, I also like to model things. So today I'm not only going to show you how to create things, but I'm also going to tell you the little tips and tricks I picked up along the way. As always, I urge to ask your questions on the right hand side in the chat bar or below the video. And I'm going to do my best to answer the questions. Now, for those of you who are who are new to us, uh, this is a part of a longer webinar series. Last time we looked at how to create suspended ceilings and, uh, and lighting elements. So if there's anything you don't understand, I suggest you look at our content on the website, archanxp.com slash webinar, where you can actually look at other courses we had in the past, including uh, advanced courses in architecture and interior design, uh, furniture design, and all the other elements. So if uh, if you're looking for something, uh, another topic maybe, an another focus, then make sure you visit the website. It's all free and it's all uh, accessible. If you want to follow along the course I'm doing today, you can download the course uh, material from the website. So you can download the files and you can download the course guide, letter of which I highly recommend because it's not only has all the illustrations, but it has all the numbers and dimensions I'm going to use. So. If you want to replicate what I'm doing now, you can download all this content and then we, you can uh, jump right at it. So curtain walls, what are these? Now the illustration says it, it's quite good. So it's basically a um, large glass surface with uh, divisions, but they also, so they are in between, between, uh, between windows, so openings and walls. They, they are openings, but they act like walls. I'm going to explain in a second what, what that means. First, uh, in Archline, you know that there's a curtain wall tool and with that you can create complex elements, especially if you have like a larger office complex like this one. So it doesn't matter what kind of surface you're looking for, you can fine tune the curtain wall tool to create something like this. Now, today's show is going to be about something a bit simpler, but the concept, the tools I'm using are the same. So using the tools I'm showing you now, uh, you, can, you, you can create things that you see on the screen right now, but for now, we are looking at a very simple example of a of an office building. So this is going to be a uh, very simple office, and I want to create uh, partition walls, which are going to be glass surfaces. So the four things that we are going to look at today is how to create a curtain wall, so as to act as a room divider, and then we look at how to convert an existing wall into a curtain wall because we can do that too. Uh, we are going to look at how to join uh, multiple curtain walls into new constructions and also we are going to create unique and customized glass insets. Uh, what I'm thinking of maybe is a, a panel of, of glass bricks over here and there. So we are going to look all, look at all that. So let's start with uh, how do we actually you know set up a curtain wall. In, in our software there's a there's a property for everything in uh, in here. So if you want to create a wall, you, you know, you already covered that. You can customize how high the wall should be, how thick it should be, what the material should be. Now it's all the same for the curtain walls. You just right click and open up the properties. And here, uh, actually you can save multiple versions of this curtain wall. You can have customized styles, but you know, these sizes and these properties are not good for me because I want to create something sleeker. So what I do, and again, don't forget that I'm using uh, values which are in the course guide. So if you're wondering where these numbers are coming from, then that's where they are coming from. So I'm going to have to use a curtain wall, which is higher than this. So I'm just going to say that uh, the width should be 7,150 and the height is actually 2,600 millimeters. So now I have something which we call a box width and box height. Does this mean that the curtain wall would be just this size so you, ca you cannot make it smaller? Uh, no, this is just the overall size. Uh, I'm going to show later on what I mean by that. But before I proceed, uh, let's talk about units. So in units uh, in Archline, if you look at the bottom right, you see which kind of unit we have right now. We are in millimeters, but if you want to change it to something else, maybe meters or, or anything else, you can go to settings, um, units and angles. It's over here and here you can change the input values. So just a side note, this is where you can set things up, but I'm going to use it in millimeters now. So going back to the curtain wall properties, I know that we already set up the, the width and the height. And the next thing we have to set up is actually the, the thickness of the, 
of the element because this is going to act as a wall. So it has a thickness value, which I can fine tune. See, if I want to change it to anything else, I can, I'm going to use it as 100 millimeters, but you know, I could change it to 50 and it's going to be a thinner, but I'm just going to crank it back to 100 millimeters. Uh, this is just, um, it turns uh, yellow because of, of uh, refreshing. So if, if you refresh the drawing, it's going to be turning back to normal. So next thing we have to define is the basic geometry. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, it, it's mostly concerned about the mullions. So this vertical and horizontal divisions, uh, you can customize how, how thick they should be. So we know that the mullion thickness should be uh, 30 millimeters. You see that the drawing changes whenever I do that. And let's look at this uh, division now. If I say that the width is uh, instead of five millimeters is 30 millimeters, I see that the mullion changes. So everything happens real time. So let's now change the mullion's material, which from steel, I have to change it to something else. Uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know, aluminum. And it should be a bright one. So here we go. We draw now. It's it looks like that. But there's a couple of other st things I still have to change, and that is the um, the glass material, because it has to be um, something bluish or turquoise. So, and I think this is this is fine. So I'm getting there. So this is what what I'm looking for. But there's a couple of things that I'm not satisfied with, and that is. Uh, well, let's check out the number of divisions. Uh, three divisions horizontally and three vertically. That that is fine. You can you could change this to something else. So then the curtain wall changes. Uh, I'm just going to set it back to its original value. Uh, check out the frame width and frame thickness is fine. And the frame material that's still steel. So I just have to change it to something else. Um, and that has to be aluminum right one for that matter so let's just hit update and the frames I'm not going to um, going to uh, change except for this the corner column exists I'm going to disable that so this would be important for for another purpose and we are going to work uh, work on this later on so before I proceed obviously I could save this into a customized style because I don't want to spend too much time creating this over and over again I'm just going to say that this is a new style and it's a webinar curtain wall and here we go so now from now on uh, I can retrieve this if I go back to the normal one I can go back to the webinar version so I'm just going to hit okay and now comes the fun part when we actually start positioning the curtain wall right I want to have a division I want to seal off this office I'm not really a fan of uh, one room offices I like to work in my separate box because that's just the way I am. So I want to seal this off, but I want to make it transparent. So you can see that the colleagues are not spending too much time on solitaire on the internet. You want to see them. So you want to create like a transparent portal here. So what we do is that we jump into the 2D uh, right here. I'm modifying the 3D as well. So I see what I'm doing like that. And uh, I want to create a wall going from here to there. So what I do, I go to curtain walls, curtain wall and now I make sure that my customized style is placed and what I do is that uh, I click on the starting point of the curtain wall and before I proceed I, I let's just look at this because this looks like a wall right so when you are when you're placing a wall you do it the same way you have one blue reference line and you have the orange part which is added to the wall now I want to position this uh, this wall in the middle of this line. So what I do is that I either uh, push the F5 key so that the wall would be moved back and forth, or I can just use this toggle over here to move it left or right. So now I'm positioning it to the middle. I'm satisfied with that. So I'm just going to draw it like that. So when I do that right away, the, the curtain wall is placed. So because of the values I submitted in the beginning, uh, because of the height value, this, uh, this is already good. Now, another thing that we have to know is that I did define that it should be 7,000 some, something millimeters long, but this is actually longer. The software doesn't care. Uh, if if the, if the uh, placed item is bigger than the encompassing box, the software is going to create that. But one huge problem with this curtain wall is that it doesn't have a door. So you can't really enter and exit this location. And that is when the interaction between doors, windows, and curtain walls come into the picture. So what I do is I go into the 2D and I look for a door which is uh, fine for my purposes. Uh, let's look for something um, single leaf 
glass door would be fine. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it. And I'm going to place it from wall endpoint. And do I even know where it should be? Well, I, I do. Uh, I know that it should be... Um, Let's just position it first and then I'm just going to uh, bother with the with the uh, exact position later on. I know for a fact that the distance from wall line should be 5 millimeters. Otherwise, not sure if you see it, but the, but the door is actually going growing out of the of the uh, wall. So I have to change this value. I'm going to say this is 5 millimeters. So now it's nicely in pushed into the wall. And then I have to define where the door actually is. I'm just looking for a value in, in which I can... Uh, I can change that. I think the best way is to push it to the middle of the... I think it's in the middle, almost in the middle. You are going to see later on why that's relevant. So once I have the door inserted, the next thing I have to do, I have to change its uh, its height value, which I can do in several uh, places. I can do it from the floor plan, so I can change it right, right here. I can change it in the properties. I can change it in the 3D. Use whichever is more convenient. I'm going to do it from the floor plan. Now, 2490 is the is the size of this uh, of this door. So it's now going all the way up to the ceiling, almost all the way. So what I want to do is that I'm not really satisfied with how the divisions look like. So that's the next thing I have to change. And well, there's actually another thing, but that's really just, just a matter of taste. Uh, the, the door doesn't have the same material as the, as the curtain wall. So I want to change that. I click on the curtain wall, right click, find material. Now I have this uh, turquoise glass and I'll just drag it and drop it onto the uh, door and I'm just going to replace the material with another one so now it's better so next thing I have to edit the layout somehow I want to make sure that the divisions are not it's kind of weird uh, not that pleasing visually so what I do is that I'm uh, going to go to the 2d magnify it click on the curtain wall right click and I say I want to edit the layout and what it does is that seemingly this is just a two-dimensional copy of the uh, of the walls, but actually it's much more because if I go here and change any of these divisions, then the divisions would will be changing on the 2D and the 3D as well. Let's see an example. Uh, for instance, I want to change this division, and I want to move it. Uh, let's say I want to move it uh, 1,400 from that side. So I can do that like that. So if I do it, uh, let me just jump into the uh, 2D, I'm in 3D, I see that it's moving. So if I want to, for example, change any kind of uh, values, for example, this. By the way, if you ever close the layout, you can just right click it on it and say continue editing layout. Because if you, if you don't do that, it's just a bunch of uh, lines. So right click, continue editing layout. And uh, then I'm just going to move this from... Um, from here, I'm going to move it. Um, let's say, how far should it should it go? It should go. I have to find a reference point, so I'm just going to say that from uh, from there, it should be a thousand four hundred, like that. So this way, you can you can fine tune how your divisions look like. Again, I'm just going to show you that again. If you move anything, you see this green dot, and that would show you. Um, the element would move in relation to what? So if you keep on hitting the tab key, then the green dot is going to move. So if you want to change the distance between the million and the corner point, then just make sure that the uh, that the uh, green dot is at the corner. Or if you want to change this its distance from the door or from the other million, just keep on hitting the tab key, and then the green dot is going to move the way it should be. So. We know that this, this mullion is now 1,400 from the corner point. Let's amend the other one as well, so make sure that it's it's nice. Let's just hit the tab key until it goes into beginning, and 1,400 would be fine. So I think it's uh, it's symmetrical to some degree. So let's go to the 3D and adore what we have done. I think this is good enough. So next thing is uh, we are going to go more into the details of uh, layout editing. And we are going to go a bit more experimental with the mullions and divisions. So let's jump to the uh, second office. And again, seal it off with the same things as we did before, with some minor exceptions. So when you want to draw a curtain wall, you have two choices. You either go to the curtain wall menu and draw it like that, or you can pick up an existing curtain wall, right click and say create similar. You know, whichever you, you are more familiar or more uh, comfortable with, 
that's what you should be using. So again, I'm going to draw a curtain wall here. Just let me adjust the 3D so that you can see. In fact, let me just magnify it a bit so that way you can see it nicer. Okay, so again, uh, next thing I have to do, I have to position a, a door. I already have a door in my model, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to say uh, this has to be uh, move a copy. And for now, I'm just going to push it somewhere on the drawing. I don't care where it is because I'm going to move it later on somewhere else. So I'm just going to make a copy. And I'm going to say that this door is a hundred, uh, sorry, one meter, so a thousand millimeters from the corner point. And then I want to change the opening direction. So actually, instead of the direction, I want to mirror it. So I want the, the fixed panel to be here and the door would be there. So I'm just going to say I'm mirroring uh, left and right. And the last thing, really last thing, I want to make it go from inside to, to outside like that. So now I have that covered. And then I think the material is fine, so I don't have to change that. And the distance from wall line is good as well because I, um, I copied it from the original element. But the thing I I'm looking for is the sort of like a change of the divisions. I don't want to have uh, horizontal divisions. So what I do is that I open up the curtain wall properties. Now I go to the basic geometry and instead of having three vertical panels, I only need one. If I do that, then I, the, the horizontal uh, divisions and the horizontal panels will be gone. So now I have this very nice, nice vertical divisions. That's fine. So I'm just going to hit OK. It just changed things for a second. And then I have a very nice large portal, which I like. So this is this should be like an ex executive suite with all these large glass surfaces. But again, there are some problems. Maybe you don't see it right away, but if you go into the settings, you would see that this is actually not done. So I have to go to the layout again and fine tune this uh, curtain wall a bit. So if I right click, I say edit layout, I see that there is an issue over there. So what is that even? That is actually one of the vertical divisions, which I'm not sure if you can see it in the 3D, but this would be, it's its right over there, this tiny thing. What this means is that even though I don't see it, there's an extra vertical uh, division. What do I do? Well, I could go to the settings and disable the vertical division, but then I would get rid of the other division as well. So instead of making that, I'm going to push this division over here. There are two ways to do it. You can either uh, go to the, go here and move it vertically, or you can type in the values. I'm now going to say that this should be going here. By the way, when you are positioning something, you see that the cursor uh, is on the left-hand side and the mullion to be moved on the right-hand side. But if you want to flip, flip it, because this is your reference point, but you want the million to move here, you just hit the F5 key or just toggle it over here. And then if you click, the division would be at the right place like that. So now I have I have moved the improper division to somewhere else. Um, next thing I'm hoping to achieve, I want to move the remaining one division because uh, maybe it's not in the middle. So I'm just going to check it real quick. Uh, say move and it should be from this point. Let's just hit the tab key to move to that point. Uh, it should be 2200. Again, you can do this graphically. You can do it based on drawings you have, but if you had exact values, it's much better to do it that way. So once we have the, the main uh, divisions, one thing I don't like is the Let's just go closer to so you can see that the, the values of the of the mullion, they are too thick or maybe they are too, uh, too uh, thin. So how do you change that? You go back to the layout and you go, sorry, you click on the mullion and you say you want to edit the mullion and here you can change the, the mullion thickness and, and uh, width one by one. So if you want to make this a little bit wider, or thicker, you just say that the thickness is going to be 40 millimeters. And when you do that, you see that it changes. So every single mullion one by one can be changed. And again, let's go back and change the the thickness and the height and the width as well, because that just look, would look nicer. So that's how you change it one by one. And again, you could copy these properties to other, other, um, other elements as well. So let's just 
count what we have so far. So, so far we have one meeting room with vertical and horizontal divisions. We have another one with customized mullion thicknesses. So this one, for example, is, is customized. But then we have another meeting room which we have to seal off and we have to uh, create a curtain wall here. Before I do that, let's just think about how do we create a curtain wall. In the beginning, I, I mentioned that you can either create a curtain wall as a new element or you can, uh, you can use a wall and turn it into a curtain wall. Now, that would be many, most time useful when you're doing, for example, reconstructions or things like that. So let's just uh, go back to the uh, 2D and investigate this wall, for example. Uh, let's assume that this is a reconstruction project. You don't need this wall anymore, so you just get rid of it. And instead, you are just going to uh, create a wall which goes from here to there. So no, no curtain walls here, just a normal wall. So let's click on wall and uh, use a very simple one layered 10 centimeter or or a 100 millimeters thick wall like that so we go all the way like this so now i have a wall so it's completely sealed off and my task let me just move here so you guys you can see that my task is to turn this into curtain wall so how do we do that first of all let's make sure that the values are correct the, the height is correct the thickness is correct all I have to do, I go to the 2D or 3D, whichever is more convenient for you. And you will go to building curtain wall and uh, convert wall to curtain wall. And then you click on the walls and the curtain wall would be, would be created. Now, how did the software know which kind of curtain wall to use? Well, it was defined by the styles. And here I have, I think, a sketchy mistake because the wall was too high and now the curtain wall is reaching into the ceiling. So you can actually uh, change that. You just go and do low, uh, change height and you can do, do it like that. Or, and it's another good tool, you can say that you click on this curtain wall, right click, copy properties, disable all the properties. And the only properties you want to uh, set up is the, uh, the height. And then you click here, you click there, hit enter and then the software would be sort of decreasing it back. Uh, let's just, let's just try it another way. Uh, what was the value again? I think the height value should be uh, 2,600. That, that was the, that was the culprit. So 2,600 would be, would be fine. Let me just get rid of that. The problem was that when I was drawing the wall, it was, uh, it was way too high. So I'm just going to go back to wall and create a 10 centimeter uh, thick wall with 2,600 uh, height. Yeah, it was too high. So it was going sort of into the suspended ceiling. Uh, this one is good. And off we go, drawing the wall again, back to where we started. So let's just position it like that. And then we turn it into a curtain wall. Again, you could do it in the 3D, 2D, but just make sure that you click on the right elements because otherwise, uh, if the wrong elements are uh, picked up, then the connection would be not good. So, and I have one meeting room sealed off with this very nice uh, curtain walls, but the problem is, again, the same. There's no door, there's no element to sort of enter and exit this location from, and I don't like the division. So the door is the first thing I'm going to amend, and I can do that by uh, just picking up this door and copying it onto the, onto the other element, like that. Let's assume it's it's like this. And I'm just going to say that the distance from, from the corner uh, should be, again, a meter. I think that would be fine. Uh, sorry, that was one millimeter. I forgot that I, I worked in millimeters. Instead, I have to go with uh, a thousand. And if you have put it, and for some reason it's not lining up, you could be even moving it um, vertically. I mean, uh, graphically like that. So you can say that you want to bind to this point. So assume assume that you made a mistake, assume that it's here. And if you want to move it and align it with another door, just click on the door, say move, hit the shift key and move to the move the cursor to the other door and then they would be lining up. So um, again, I have to change the, uh, the opening direction. I think it should be inside. Um, okay, so now I have the door and then it, the age old topic is the divisions. So that's what I have to figure out for the, for the, uh, this part, the one on the right, I don't need to have uh, 
horizontal divisions. So I'm just going to go to basic geometry and number of classes uh, vertical should be one. So this one is good. And the other one, let me just consult my chart because what we want to achieve is this. So we this we have already achieved. Again, if you want to change the Boolean thickness, you can do this uh, like that. And uh, let's delete the horizontal Booleans from the other wall as well. Just click on it, go to basic geometry and number of classes vertically, just redraw. And here we go. So we have created the nice large glass panels that we want. Uh, if you want to recolor things, you can do that, uh, like like right now, if you want to go back to find another glass, then you can just find another glass type and just dragging and dropping it and say that you want to modify it like this. So no kind of settings are permanent. You can always go back and change the settings right there. I'm, I'm going to undo this with Ctrl Z or with the undo key, but I just want to show you that this is how you can do that. Also, you can, with the same logic, you can recolor the divisions as well. Now, um, so so far we have demonstrated the three different versions of a curtain, curtain wall with different division types. Now, the final task is um, is what we use when we want to create uh, like brick uh, glass brick panels. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So in this office, I have a very large uh, wall surface, but this is a very boring and and large and inhumane kind of surface. I want to create two sort of boxes through which you can see. Now, there are two ways to do this again, just like with anything else in the design process, there are more ways to answer the same question. You could be using windows for this, you could be using a material for this, but if you use a curtain wall, then you have ability to control the number of divisions and that is what you cannot achieve with textures. That's something that you can only achieve with a parametric element. Without explaining it uh, too much, I'm going to show you that this is a drawing that we use to cut the walls into the uh, to, to cut the holes into the walls, so that would be our guide to create the well. Let's call them curtain walls. Let's call them glass panels. So uh, let me just find an illustration to show this is what we are um, what we are looking for. So that is the end result we want to achieve. It's always better to show it instead of uh, explaining it. So how do we how do we do that? Now there's a tool in the software which uh, which allows you to turn a wall into a curtain wall, we have already seen that. But there's another tool which is able to fine tune the shape of the curtain wall. Now in this scenario, we haven't, we don't have a curtain wall here yet, but the wall still is able to add like an inset. So if you go to curtain wall and you say reshape curtain wall and click like that, and then the software tells you that, okay, this is the wall layout. I want to keep the layout, yes. Um, there's a tooltip saying that specify the profile. And then the software tells me, okay, so where do you want the curtain wall to be? And instead of tracking this, I can just go with the paint bucket tool, click on this profile, and then the software tells me that this is the element that we are going to insert here based on this drawing. Why does it look like this? Because that is the style which is default in the software. So we have to change that. We have to go to basic geometry and we are just going to say that the the thickness is 10 millimeters the million width is uh, sorry the width is going to be 80 millimeters and the glass width is going to be 60 millimeters and the material should be uh, let's let's just not change it right now instead let's go uh, let's proceed and change the other values uh, the number of divisions, three horizontally, but vertically it should be 11, like that. Nice. Now, I think I have to change the material from bright aluminum to something else. Uh, should be G110 maybe. If I have that, yes, I do. I think it is taking shape. So what I have to do, I have to hit OK. Let's see what I've created. So this is how you can sort of punch into punch a hole into the uh, the wall and create a curtain wall. Um, the frame thickness is is not that good, so I have to change that. I I forgot to do that in the first panel. I can do that too. Let's just go back to the, to the drawing and say that this I have to change and the frame thickness should be. Uh, let's just see where I can actually find that. 
I think it should be frame. And in the beginning, I did show you where to change that. It's just, I think that was the one. A thickness, yes, here we go. So 10 millimeters instead. Uh, let's just change it to 100. And later on, I'm going to look this up where you can actually uh, fine tune that. Oh, here we go. So that's what I wanted to achieve. Okay, hit OK. And now I have the right result. There's another one, another panel to go. So I can uh, I can create that too by doing the same thing, clicking on the wall and say uh, reshape curtain wall. Select the element, and you see when I'm putting down the uh, the layout now, I see that the curtain wall panel on the left hand side is already visible. So I have to I have to superimpose my uh, my group over the existing drawing and then I do the same exercise this time I'm going to say that this panel is the one I'm, I'm willing to work on the software does remember the last settings except for for the most problematic one which is which was the frame width I think that was decreased to to five millimeters and there you have it so now you have the two panels if you want to give it a much I don't know, a uh, realistic flavor. You can uh, go all the way to the settings and go a bit crazy about this. Uh, let's go to basic geometry and change the texture to something else. If you have one which, uh, which looks like a glass panel, for example, glass 20, this, is, uh, this should be uh, a picture of a, a transparent image of a glass brick. I just hit OK, redraw, and then you have a much nicer result with the texture right there. So again, I'm going to change this here as well. So I just go to basic geometry and change it to, well, you don't have to look it up again from the from the library because it's already in the in model uh, library. So just click here. Oh, sorry, I accidentally changed the frame material, which was uh, G 110. That's what you do when you are uh, when you're in a hurry to you are so overexcited to create things that uh, you just jump over the details. So there we go. And there you have it. So again, these are transparent. You can see that you can see through it. Uh, this is a specialized uh, image that we are using, but you can create these images on your own as well. So just to summarize, curtain walls, what could they be used for? Well, they could be used to create large glass surfaces with the ability to manually fine tune where the divisions are and how thick, how wide and, and uh, how the divisions look like. You can even customize the cross section profile of the divisions. You can add doors and windows into the elements and they are going to be interaction with the curtain walls just like, just like when you're pushing elements into an, into an actual wall. Another huge advantage is that if you have existing walls, you can turn them into curtain walls with just a simple click. And if you want to create an elaborate element, for example, like a glass wall panel, you can do that with the curtain walls, with or without the texture, it's really all cool. But if you want to have the manual ability to control where the divisions are and how they look like, then the curtain wall would be the right tool for that. And again, just remember, combining these tools, you can create things like that. So well, what I did here, I just, it sort of rinse and repeat the same things I learned before and I created this, these large uh, portals. Well, going back, I, I should have uh, aligned the, the mullions, but you can do that with the layout tool. Now, going back to the original uh, project, I see that I have a couple of, uh, couple of uh, questions. Uh, would be good if you could provide some data extraction from your documentation. A sections, quantity takeoff. Okay, this doesn't concern the topic today, but uh, if you go to documentation, you can have quantity takeoff on building elements. So, for example, the number of walls, the number of doors and windows, interior calculations, styling calculations. So, today's session was more about the graphic style of things, so how to create things. But if, you, if you're looking for quantity takeoff schedules and, and this kind of things, then uh, this is where you can find them. Um, there's another question. Uh, is there a way to create the 3D parts first and then go to attach the part information one by one for documentation extraction? Again, this really doesn't concern today's topic, but here you can do that. And if you're talking about uh, adding data to a 3D element, let's just assume that this is the element in question. You go to pencil and you just uh, 
add the elements over here so you can add beam parameters to any kind of element for example to this chair if you know the manufacturer then you can fill up this data and then that data would be part of your export and uh, yes <laughs> Another comment that Ashnai brought the sunshine back to England. Well, glad to hear that here in Hungary it's still a bit cloudy and windy, but things are bound to improve. So what we have for you for uh, next class is another and actually the last part of the advanced webinar course, and that will be about uh, framed construction. So what we are looking at next is how to create stud work, how to create frame construction with insulation or without, and how to create the things that you see on the screen. So if you are looking for the ability to control not only the wall um, glass panels, but you also want to create like a framed multi-layered construction, then that would be the show for you. That would be on uh, Thursday, same time as, as today. And that will be the wrap up of our uh, advanced course. If you if you have missed any of the shows and you feel that there are gaps in your Arsh and XP knowledge, make sure you go back to the website and then you can find not only the upcoming shows, what we are doing right now, but also the shows we did before. And if that's not to your palate, you can find other shows which are dealing with documentation. There was some questions today on documentation. So make sure you check out these because they are going to answer those, those questions. If you are more into architecture, creating roofs, for example, or customized columns with the with, uh, holes and beams and whatnot, and the interaction between the, the beams and, and columns, then these are the courses for you. And if you're looking for furniture designs, we have that covered as well. So again, I hope this preliminary sort of look into how curtain walls are designed was, uh, was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, keep them coming to my email address and uh, then see you on Thursday. Until then, happy designing.